a few days now since we said goodbye to our little girlies. And we've had a lot of emotions going on in regards to that Can from us and from our kids. Do a flip? Sure. Um, that's been hard to, it's been a lot for us to process and a lot for our kids to process. And um, yeah, I don't know. I think with every single placement you get and every goodbye you say, it uh, different emotions come out and you can never really prepare yourself for what's going to come out of your heart and what's going to come out of your kids. Um, and I think that there are so many negative things that you could see um, and find with saying goodbye to kids, but there's also so many positive things. And so we are just trying to discuss what the things that we felt um, have been good and the things that have been hard um, with the transition. Um, what do you, what are some things that you feel like you've seen that it's been hard? I mean, what? Hard? Yeah. See a movie. Um, I think, uh, one of the hard things is that, you know, with this particular, yes? Please go play. What are you going to say? <laughs> this particular case, we've had these two girls for almost a year. Um, so loving on two kiddos for a year. And then not seeing them or hearing from them or knowing you know, anything about them is tough because um, you invest so much um, and care so much. And for them to just all of a sudden be gone is, is a big loss. So I think that's tough um, when you see kids go. The, um, can I jump onto the mattress? I said yes. Now go. Yeah. Can you jump onto the On the stairs. Yes. Oh, sure. <laughs> so that's hey Bex, can you let Maverick out? Thanks, buddy. Can we do it from the top? Um, for me, who as the mama, who's I mean, he's poured into them as much as I have, but you know, he's the dad and he works and um and you know, girls are just carry things more emotionally than guys, definitely in our relationship, and it's been hard for me. Um Oh man. Um, it's been hard for me not uh, to be concerned about their hearts and if they're feeling abandoned or if they're feeling um, mad or even just missing us, you know. And so that's been on my mind a lot. So it's not even just like that we're transitioning and getting used to life without them, but it's hurting for them. It's been hard. <laughs> I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> um, our, I was able to talk to the to the new foster mom on the phone last night. And I could hear the little three-year-old in the background. And, you know, you feel jealousy and envy and frustration of like why why did this have to go down this way you know and uh, and it's hard you know it's super hard you know any transition is hard but and i'm i you know we've we've had cases before where we had absolutely no contact with the kids afterwards i mean zero contact and I wouldn't wish for that either. I mean, like, it, that was awful. And still to this day, people will ask us, like, have you heard about this kid? And we're just like, no, we have no idea. Um, and that's awful on its own. But then to sit there on the phone and be able to hear how they're doing is great. Um, but then you hear the voices and, like, the, in reality sinks in. And it's really hard and it's really heavy. Daddy. Go play, Difficult son. Difficult things? Yeah. Um... It's also difficult just because we built so many relationships around the case, um, particularly with uh, the the mom of the girls. I see you guys. <laughs> um, so it was, it's it's hard not to I see you. have updates on her. Um, I see just that. <laughs> she just can, okay. Go play the train. And you. Hey, hey! I need you to go play the train. Um, so yeah, it's hard just not knowing, you know, how mom's doing and, um, being able to have that update. And just the case, yeah, the, the whole case, the case as a whole, I guess you don't know anything anymore. Just because we, 
we genuinely cared for her and had built a relationship with her and we're so hopeful for her to, to get a girls back um, and we're so on her team and trying to, to help that happen. So now to not know anything about her, how she's doing personally or how the case is going. Um, it's just kind of tough because it's something we fought for, you know, for almost a year. Uh, and, you know, you're able to know bits of information when you're in the case and the case is open to you and your family. But once you say goodbye, the case closes, you know, so I was even emailing a caseworker yesterday just asking some things and I realized like oh my goodness you have no reason to tell me anymore and you really could just respond with not your business and um which is really hard so um I'm sure that there's more mm -hmm. tough parts I think just walking by the open bedroom you know is hard um but there's so much good too to look forward to and um you know like some of the some of the amazing things is that you know when our home is so full and we have so many kids coming and going that the time with our kids is a little more limited. You know we have to share our hands and share our hearts and share our time and our patience. And so the times where we don't have foster kiddos, we really just I mean we just don't take any moment for granted. You know we take every single chance we can to invest into the kids we have here, which are our forever children and to love them and to make memories with them and to go just on adventures and because we don't know how long we're going to have this time. And so I feel like we're really good about making sure that that time is spent well with our, with our three kiddos when we have it. Um, and even with visitations, I mean, when the kid, when we have kiddos here, the one or two hours that they're at visitation, we do the same thing. You know, we want to miss, we don't want to miss a single moment of building that family bond and building that time with our kids. And it really, I feel like it really helps us not, not to miss things. And, you know, I feel like sometimes you look back at families and you're like, oh, they're missing out on their kids' whole childhood because of this, that, or the other. And, um, yes, we have foster care or have, have foster kids and, so you're spread a little bit thinner, but at the same time, like we really take every free chance we get to invest in love the own, I mean, our own three that we have, which is a really good positive way to look at it. You know, when we've said goodbyes, mm -hmm. what else is, um, I think it's also just a time for not only for us to uh, be super intentional with our family, but it's time for us to recoup. Mm -hmm. Kind of, because um, having you know lots of kids and then kids have lots of needs in a home takes a lot of energy and a lot of emotional energy um, and physical, and so I think you know over the long haul all that takes a toll. And sometimes you don't even um, feel it or notice that you're drained um, until you have the time to kind of recharge and then you realize I don't know that that's that. true for me sure. <laughs> but I think it becomes a normal kind of yeah and then when it drops back down to three it's it's um it's just a much easier load yeah because it's not the normal that you're at it gives you a different perspective yeah uh -huh. so I think it's a time that like we can refresh as parents and we can Daddy, recharge it's a time that we can get excited about the next set of kids that are going to come and um, kind of remember why we do it and what you know what our intentions are and what like how we just desire to love these kids because uh, when you're parenting them every day for for a year you still love them a ton and, you, and that's like the root of it but um, it's hard and so at the beginning. I think you, you kind of remember even more why you do it. Mm -hmm, and why it's needed. And, yeah. yeah, there's just th this excitement that comes with these kids, knowing like, oh my goodness, we have a chance to to change another kid's life and to give somebody else hope and um, to be introduced to a whole family that we wouldn't have known prior to these kids coming in our home. and. So yeah, there's so much sadness when kids leave, but it also gives you this reminder of like, but there's so many more kids out there who need families like us. And um, so it gives you this, it gives you something to look forward to. And even our kiddos, he was just saying, 
I want one this big. I don't know if you saw that, but he was saying, I want, I want a baby next. I want like a foster baby next. And so it's really fun mm -hmm. for our family to be able to participate in and um, talk about the next kids that will come. And, um, he will even pretend to name kiddos and just like, next, I want to get a kid named this and I'm going to name him this and call her that. And, um, so I don't know. We have a lot of laughs and excitement together as we look forward to what our next journey is going to be and the next kids that come into our home. And, um, I mean, sometimes it's so easy to get swept up in the negative feelings of it and just the, the sorrows of it. Um, but there really is so much good. And just remembering that we gave those kids all so much during the season they were here. And, you know, it was stuff that they wouldn't have had had they not been here most likely. And, um, so we try not to get, we try not to drown ourselves in the sorrows and then the negative side. Lucky that that didn't go everywhere. Yeah. Sutter, not okay. We don't play baseball in the house. Yeah. 